We're here at the beautiful Lewis Ginter Botanical Gardens where things are getting a little wild all over the property where a brand new exhibit is underway. I'm here with Kristen Thorman, who is exhibition manager and artist Colleen Hall who has a beautiful exhibit going on here. First let's talk about what this is all about. This is something different for the garden, isn't it? Absolutely. This is an idea that came from our staff and we wanted to feature not only the plants and nature itself but the local creative talent that we have in our area here in Richmond. So we have regional artists creating art out of nature, whether it's live plants or things like bamboo and sticks and twigs, all of it's designed to create a really enriching experience for our guests. And these exhibitions are all over the garden, aren't they? Exactly. They're spread throughout. It's almost like a scavenger hunt. So as folks are exploring and visiting, they can turn the corner and find something new right, you know, as they explore. What are you hoping that visitors will get from or learn from this, uh, visiting this ex exhibition? Well, each of the artworks have slightly different themes to go along with them. So we're hoping it provides a dialogue at each spot where uh, people can really talk about the environment and the importance of it and what it means to them. And I understand that there's also going to be some hands-on opportunities for visitors. Exactly. In addition to the featured works of art, we have creation stations where visitors can make their own art and leave it as long as it lasts and then the next folks come along and, and make their own art as well. So it'll build and change over the season. And Mother Nature has a wonderful way of doing that. Absolutely. Colleen, as an artist, you usually use a different kind of canvas don't you? I do. I typically am a painter by trade and so using plants and dirt and trees is, is a little out of my normal medium but I've been enjoying it and like everything I saw it as an opportunity to grow creatively and and learn and do some research on how to do this and I've always admired things like Andy Goldsworthy's work and and this kind of artwork and and uh, so I was looking forward to the opportunity and uh, my work has always had three things in common, uh, education, nature, and storytelling. So I found that this was a great way to bring those three things together. And you take your ex uh, uh, inspiration from what you see here at Ginter, right? Yes, definitely. This has always been one of my favorite places in Richmond. And uh, I'm actually looking forward to uh, coming back as a guest and just enjoying it. It's so beautiful. Um, but, but the plants and the... I've got, got a renewed respect for the horticulturists and all the gardeners with all the work that goes into creating a piece with plants because nature is a bit um, fickle sometimes and they truly have a gift to keep it so gorgeous out here. So tell us about your turtle. Yes, the, the piece is called Turtle Island and I, um, as I said, love storytelling and so I was doing a little research about turtles and they it surprised me. I didn't know they had a lot of uh, symbolism around the world from India and China Native American creation stories often featured the turtle as a piece of their their uh, mythology and symbolism and um, it also had this great symbolism now over the last probably 20 30 years of being an environmental movement symbol so I thought well this would be kind of neat to share with the children um, and that it also kind of symbolizes being patient and having perseverance and being wise some things that I think we're all going to need as we take care of our fragile planet and so it kind of all worked together and um, so this particular version is a Native American, it's an Iroquois creation myth, uh, where there is a turtle that comes up out of the water and creates the earth, and there is a tree that grows out of its back that's kind of called the tree of life or tree of peace. Well, it's not quite complete yet. You'll have to come out now, starting today, and, and go see it. So this is an exhibition, um, Kristen, that's going to run for quite a while, isn't it? So we're going to see it change and evolve. Absolutely. It runs all the way through October 1st. So as the seasons kind of morph and change, we're going to get to see some of the pieces grow, like Colleen's piece. Um, others, uh, the guests will be able to interact with in different ways as the season goes on. So we have everything from a musical piece where guests can actually play on it and uh, places where they can hop, skip, and jump for the little ones. And um, again, these beautiful sculptures like Colleen's where they get to learn a little bit more about, about the plants themselves. And are you open on Memorial Day? We are, absolutely. <laughs> come on out and see us. All right, there's your invitation. On this Memorial Day, come out and visit Lewis Ginter Botanical Garden. Now we're going to send it back to you. And as mentioned, Ginter Botanical Garden is open today, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., and they're offering free admission on this Memorial Day for military personnel, veterans, first responders, and their families, and free admission will also be offered for veterans as well. The garden is at 1800 Lakeside Avenue.